Hi guys, this is Ryu from Ryuri.com and today I want to show you how to create an HDR image in Photomatics. Photomatics is one of the HDR programs that I use. I use HDRFX Pro 2 from Google Software Photomatics and I also do digital blending which basically means that you manually assemble a HDR photo in Photoshop through layer masking. Now, I use all three methods depending on which photo I'm working on and to be honest there's no recipe you just have to you just have to sometimes try different different approaches and see which one works best for a given batch of photos um, because not always um, you know photomatic sometimes works great sometimes HDRFX Pro 2 is better and sometimes you just have to do it manually in Photoshop to get the best results so there is no recipe for that the good thing about a uh, photomatics is that you can actually selectively adjust ghosting and that's a very powerful tool especially when you take photos um, uh, where there is a lot of people and you have a lot of movement and you know you you want to selectively choose areas and and photos to you know to blend ghosting from in HDRFX Pro 2 you can choose photos but you can't choose the areas now in Photomatics you can actually choose the area and I'll show you how to do it anyway I already um, I already choose photos from my uh, from my row files um, some of those pictures here are very old uh, tone mapped images which are horrible so I decided to you know um, redo uh, redo this uh, Ginza shot in Tokyo because it's, it's in my opinion it's a great picture but uh, the editing uh, my editing skills you know uh, way back then when I was uh, creating this image uh, you know when were not really that good so I was still um, learning uh, HDR photography and they just look like crap so um, I choose photos and when you choose photos for um, for your um, for the uh, the bracketed photos that you have you need to take into consideration a few things first of all you need to have one photo that is quite dark and underexposed to especially when you have something like sunset or city lights or some strong lights going into the lens like a you know whatever you know like some spotlights or car lights whatever you need to an underexposed image then you will need to balance this underexposed image with an overexposed image that will actually show all the details in all the shadows and then you need um, one photo that it's um, let's say neutral exposure and um, this will need to be a photo from which you will be actually selecting ghosting and this is this is the shot I want I like the I like the way that you know people sort of um, this stream of walking people arranged itself and it's sort of I don't know it looks good it looks balanced for me so I'm gonna use this photo for that and uh, I'm also gonna use this photo um, to balance that uh, that really dark image here um, I try to uh, merge those three but the final result was too dark so I decided to add one more brighter shot this one and uh, and you know merge them the thing that you need to remember uh, when you when you work on uh, when you work on HDR photos is that those photos need to be more or less aligned and to be honest if you shoot photos on the tripod then you are you are assured that you will not have any any fuzziness in the lines especially in architecture this is not so prominent in landscapes but when you shoot architecture you have very straight and steep angles they are artificial you know artificial straight lines there is no straight lines in nature but uh, man-made straight lines and if you have not aligned photo, the photos are not well aligned you will have a fuzzy photos um, so let me cancel this out here. I'm going to actually cancel this image out and put pull back my bridge. I'm going to hide this for a second. And I'm going to open those photos in Photomatics.
and I'm going to merge them uh, to our selected file so I don't need to browse for new files I'm just gonna click OK and uh, in here well my images were aligned because I took them on a tripod nonetheless I'm going to um, you know select, select align source images because I want them to be perfectly aligned you can leave, uh, leave this maximum shift at default Ghosting, yes, because I have movement, so um, I'm clicking show options to remove ghosting and reduce chromatic aberrations uh, because I don't really need them. Before I um, uh, go any further, I want to tell you that um, I actually brought all those four files beforehand to Adobe Camera Raw and I adjusted the white balance. <clears throat> so I showed this photo at the daytime white balance, but I made it slightly warmer for all the four pictures i haven't done any other line uh, adjustments and i don't suggest you do that in camera roll before you bring those photos into photomatics before because after you finish merging those files in photomatics you'll be this file will be brought automatically to photoshop to adobe camera raw so you can uh, make any further adjustments there anyway so I'm just going to click align and show the ghosting and now I'm in photomatics and you can see that the photo is ghosted. So what you do is just simply click and drag your mouse around the area that you want to be the ghosted. If you go outside the frame you will not see the marching ends but don't worry the selection still is ongoing there. So this is the area I want to have the ghosted yeah. All right, and now you can click on preview the ghosting. Now this is not really what I want, so I'm going to return to uh, select images. And when you right click here on this uh, area you selected and click here, you can actually choose the photo from which you want to uh, ghost the, the whole image. And there you go. That's what I exactly want. So I'm going to click OK and it's going to merge my image into a, an HDR image. Okay, so now the photo mask is finished merging the photo. Don't worry, this looks horrible, but this is not the final image. Um, here, when you see that uh, option here, uh, tone map and fuse, just click on that and it will bring you to a main menu in Photomatics. Now let me make it smaller so you can actually see what I'm doing. In Photomatics I usually use expo exposure, exposure Fusion and then you can, um, so I'm, I'm never really used tone mapping, just the results are not, not satisfying, so I'm using Exposure Fusion. And in here in this menu, this is quite important, I use two of them, uh, Real Estate and Natural. Well, this is real estate because we have architecture, so I'm going to use that. And real estate has a slightly different algorithm with working with highlights, which is very um, interesting, especially for night photos. And here I'm going to click on method defaults. Okay, so it's going to reset my thing. Now, you can see that the uh, slider here, highlight depth, this is actually a really cool slider. It's uh, it's a very interesting slider for actually increasing um, um, uh, increasing depth in highlights without actually blowing them out. So um, it's it's a really cool slider, and I think this is one of the um, one of the main sliders that actually I use when I fuse photos in here. Now I'm going to open the shadows because this photo is a little bit dark in the bottom, so I'm going to actually open the shadows to to the maximum I think and maybe reduce the local contrast because I want this photo to be flat you know when I bring it to Photoshop I really want it to be flat I don't want to accomplish a photo in Photomatics because that's not really um, the, this program is not really for that so you see when I'm reducing the local contrast uh, I'm, I'm gaining more information in the midtones in here and uh, the blacks are not so um, uh, heavily pronounced and that's really what I want okay now I'm satisfied with this I'm going to uh, click on apply image okay so here is my image straight from Photomatics it's 
um, I'm really happy with it. It's a little bit dark in these areas here, but it's not a problem because I can bring some details back from uh, my other exposures. The main part here, uh, the city looks fantastic, the sky looks good, and um, so I'm happy with it. And now uh, you can click on save image. Then you can choose the options. Here I suggest you choose the 16-bit um, um, TIFF, okay? And you can click here on open saved images with Photoshop uh, CS6 or whatever Photoshop you are using. You can also change the, uh, the title of this um, file, but I suggest you don't touch it because you see that here um, the Photomatics creates a very cool name which actually uh, indicates which 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 row files you used for merging this photo so in the future for example when you want to delete photos that you don't need you know it's very easy to find those that you actually the row files that you actually want to keep on your hard drive and back them up so this title is very very convenient i'm not going to press save because um, i already have this file saved so i'm going to press cancel and i'm going to close my uh, uh, close my photomatics Okay, so now I'm Photoshop and you can see that Photomatics opened my photos straight into Adobe Camera Raw, which is fantastic because now I can make my major adjustments. So I'm going to decrease the darks a bit because I think the photo is slightly too dark. I'll be applying some other filters, so, uh, you know, I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to increase the lights and slightly drop the highlights to make uh, this sky a little bit more punchy. I'm going to still increase the shadows, but not too much because I really don't want to overdo it. Maybe I'm gonna leave the shadows alone. And uh, I'm going to drop the uh, saturation uh, a little bit and increase the vibrance. Um, let me see, 100% view. Okay, that looks fine. Now I'm going to check my white point and my black points. My white point, um, those neons here are slightly, slightly overexposed. So I might actually drop a little bit of, of whites. Not too much, just a little bit, and maybe the highlights are just a tad. Okay, and I'm going to I play with colors a bit, maybe make the sky a little bit brighter. Okay, actually, I'm going to increase the oranges and drop the reds. All right, that's good. Maybe increase the saturation in yellows and maybe in oranges. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to make to correct this. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to leave it alone because I might be masking in some details from other exposures. So I will not touch that. Okay, so I think I'm good. I'm going to open this image in Photoshop. So I'm going to open one more exposure, the 78 exposure, right? So it's the same basically as this one, as uh, as those people walking in here. So that's the, that's the exposure I took the, the ghosting from. And I'm going to increase the exposure here, okay? Maybe that much. And drop the highlights slightly. Drop the whites. And increase the shadows. Okay. And I'm going to decrease the saturation, increase the vibrance, and yeah, that's it. And I'm going to bring this photo in here. All right. I'm going to press Ctrl A and Ctrl C and Select this uh, merge photo and press Ctrl V to paste it. Now, wait a minute, I want me reduce my window of my uh, 
of my Photoshop so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to place a mask over this one and invert it by pressing Ctrl I. And let's see. Yeah, I want this. Um, see this um, few details here that change. First of all, I prefer this um, um, those people here because they're much brighter. I also think that I'm going to bring this flag back and this screen back because I really like this one. Yeah, and that's basically it. Okay, so I'm going to apply a gradient filter uh, to this mask. Okay. I'm going to pick up my brush and blend things slightly manually. So I'm going to increase my flow to 100%, my opacity to 55 uh, reduce my brush size and I'm going to brush this flag in. See that looks much better. I'm going to brush this screen in. Okay. Let's see what else changes. I think I can bring those people back in because that looks a little bit better here. I might, uh, I might actually turn off this green light and just leave the red one, make it a bit more punchy. Okay, so bring those details here and this flag in here. Now let's see what else changes here. Let's zoom out. Okay, um, you probably don't see that, but those lights here change as well. So I'm going to um, blend this also. Reduce my brush size and just blend this thing in. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Actually, that looked better when it was darker. Okay, that's fine. Some of those neons look better on the original exposure, so I'm actually might might brighten some of them, you know, just just randomly to give them a bit more life. Something like that just gentle strokes of, of a you know brush I'm using Wacom tablet so it's really easy this flag here is ghosted as well so I'm going to remove that you know all those details yeah you know there's the tiny details but trust me they're very very important at the uh, final final result I wonder what does something changes in here in this area. Wonder what it is. Aha! There we go. I'm going to bring it back in. Okay. Right. I think we're done. See the difference? It's massive. Now I think that the bottom, the very bottom of this uh, street is slightly maybe too bright. So I'm actually going to change my brush to black, increase the size of it and just sort of, you know, darken the, the very bottom here. Okay. Okay. 
So let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that's fantastic. Brilliant. Actually, you know what? I think I prefer the original. The restaurant here. I think I prefer the original image. I mean the HDR one. So I'm going to actually mask it back in. Am I painting again on the? Uh, there we go. Yeah, slightly more punchy, I think. Yeah, that's okay. All right, fantastic. So I'm going to merge them. Control Shift Alt E, and uh, I don't need those layers anymore. And I'm going to save this just in uh, in case. All right.